Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for the patience. Uh, thank you for joining um, and welcome all. Welcome you all to our highly anticipated webinar in, inside Orange HRM product demo series episode one. I'm thrilled uh, to have all of you join today as we delve into uh, the features that were released in 2023. And we're also going to take a sneak peek uh, of what we have in store for 2024 with our Chief Product Officer, Himat Desanayaka. So before I pass it on to him, please note that if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to drop in a message on the chat bar. Now, these will be picked up by our moderators who will answer your queries uh, then and there. However, uh, also remember that at the end of the presentation, uh, you also have an opportunity to key in your questions, which Himat himself will pick up and answer during uh, the Q&A session. Please also note that you know, due to time constraint, he might not be able to answer all the questions. However, the unanswered questions will be directly replied to at the end of the session. So thank you. Let's hope we have a, a very interesting session here. Over to you, Hima. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining the, the first of a series of webinars on Orange HRM features. Uh, my name is Hima. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Orange HRM. Um, in this first um, webinar, we will be uh, discussing the features we released last year, 2023. So I assume most of you are existing users of Orange HRM and you are using it heavily in your organizations. So some of you may be aware of some of these features. Um, <clears throat> you may already be using some of these, but you may not be aware of all the features or even if you are using the features, you may not, um, you, you might like to see how you can add more value to your organization by using these new features. <clears throat> so from our side, we would like to um, share with you uh, these main features we implemented and at some point get your feedback, likes, dislikes, positives, negatives about the features. Um, Orange HRM is a product that we evolve based on the user feedback. We have collected over 5,000 insights from our existing user base and based on that, we can we could see certain patterns where, although we provide a certain functionality, there were certain places where most of our users liked it in a slightly different way uh, to satisfy their specific requirements. So we collected those requirements, identified those um, patterns, and came up with a list of features as priorities for last year and we roll them out. <clears throat> so one of the main features we rolled out last year at the, at the very beginning of the year is the employee profile in a dashboard view. So this is a graphical representation of all information in a summarized way, gathered from across many different modules, but, the, but information related to a single employee. So when you're managing a single employee, instead of having to navigate to different modules and search for these employees, using the employee profile, now it is possible to uh, first see a summarized view. As you can see in the image, you can see the goals of the employee, the contact details, leave, and there are so many other widgets um, that are demonstrated. And if you want to drill down deeper into certain specific information, you can click and visit uh, the relevant pages related to this employee in that module and quickly navigate back. So this introduced seamless navigation when managing an employee's information. And definitely, this is a, this is a feature that definitely will give a productivity boost uh, for the power users of Orange HR. Let's have a quick look at uh, I mean, how to use the feed. Let's begin by searching for an employee and accessing her profile. Now, Leah Andrews employee profile is displayed. This dashboard view presents information about Leah gathered from various modules. 
I will scroll down to access additional information. I can rearrange the information widgets for convenient access, placing frequently used information at the top. Now, let's process some information. Clicking on sick leave in the lead balance widget reveals that Leah has taken three sick leave days with a remaining balance of two days. Clicking on the leave redirects me to the leave module, where I can view the request details. Returning to the employee profile only requires a single click. Following that, I will access Leah's attendance sheet within the attendance module. After reviewing its details, I will return to the employee profile. Likewise, I have the ability to observe Leah's goals categorized as pending, in progress, and achieved. If I wish to examine the details of a specific goal, I can click on it, view its details in the performance module, and then return to the employee profile when finished. Moreover, I can access a summary of performance tracker logs that have been added for Leah. For a more in-depth understanding, I can examine the detailed comments within Leah's performance tracker, located in the performance tracker module, before returning to the employee profile. If I wish to assess whether Leah is meeting the expectations set during the hiring stage, I can review her hiring process by accessing Leah's candidate profile. Within this profile, I can examine details such as interviews conducted, tests completed, her resume, and any notes recorded during the hiring process. Once I have gathered the necessary information, I can easily return to the employee profile with just one click. Let's begin by searching for an employee and access. Let's begin by searching for an employee. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, yeah, I think I need to click here. Yes. Sorry about that. <clears throat> yeah, I, I hope you got some understanding about the employee profile dashboard features. I mean, we have we have just limited time, so I'm not in a position to go into each and every widget uh, and the details there but I, I hope this is a good enough overview so that you can start exploring further um, <clears throat> and one of the major features that we implemented last year is around recruitment and last year as well as this year uh, we are going to focus a lot on the recruitment module um, so in 2023 we introduced um, the end-to-end hiring process and there were certain gaps we had in the product that we managed to fill last year mainly the ability to generate documents related to the hiring process and then um, send them um, through a single click to the candidate and even to get responses from the candidate um, <clears throat> so now it's possible to generate um, documents like uh, the job offer letter that is a main 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 document and the the it's possible to generate the docu this offer letter using the information captured uh during the offer for example when you're making an offer to an employee it's possible to uh, add information like the candidate's um, address uh, the employment status um even the salary details, supervisor details, etc. And when generating the offer letter, these details are captured in the offer letter automatically, and you can use templates uh, so that you can design your own offer letter formats. You can add your logos, and it's if you want, it's even possible to. Um, request electronic signatures when accepting an offer let's have a quick look um, so that you can get a better understanding i will initially access the candidate's profile from the list next i will transition the candidate to the job offer stage the system prompts me to input offer related job details some of which will be utilized in the later generation of the offer letter these details include Validity period of the offer. Job start date. Employment status. Supervisor's name. Candidate's address. Salary details and so forth. After providing the offer details, I proceed to create an offer letter using a pre-configured template. The system offers a preview of the token values on the template to be replaced by the offer details I provided earlier. 
If I am dissatisfied with them, I can modify them at this stage. Subsequent to this, I can review the offer letter document that will be emailed to the candidate. If further adjustments are necessary, I can make them here. The offer letter is configured to be sent as an e-signature request. If this option is unnecessary, it can easily be removed from the document template. At this point, I proceed to request the e-signature. The candidate receives an email with the offer letter and the request to electronically sign it. She then reads the letter and electronically signs. Upon signing, I, in my capacity as the hiring manager, can view the signed letter attached to the candidate's profile. This marks the completion of the hiring process, and I can now proceed to add the candidate as an employee to the system. Yeah, I hope you got a um, good overview of the feature. Um, <clears throat> next view is it reporting. Now, as you mo as most of you know, Orange HRM um, has a uh, has a has the ability uh, to define custom reports. Um, I assume most of you have created custom reports uh, to the specific needs of your organization. However, uh, we, uh, um, we, we, we only allow the generation of these reports using the employee uh, information that are captured within the PIM module. Now we are in the process of extending this behavior to the other modules. Late in 2022, we started this project and initially we introduced uh, leave request as another area where you can generate reports but in 2023 we extended this behavior to a um, few other areas including goals uh, performance appraisals leave usage and entitlements things like leave balance so what this means is that now you can um, use the orange hr and report design wizard and pick and choose fields you want from these areas. For example, goal, uh, goals achieved in certain departments and the level of completion in each goal um, and the owners of goals, as well as um, <clears throat> leave related information. All this can be uh, used inside reports and you can even mix these data in a single report. So with this ability, it's possible to generate probably hundreds of combinations of reports and you can design the report that most uh, suits your requirements. And we, we hope to extend this behavior further into uh, other modules such that in uh, by end of 2024, we would cover the majority of the modules in Cellarange Chime. So this, the reporting capability would be quite comprehensive. Once again, let's have a quick look. So by seeing how the feature behaves, you get a better understanding. I will initiate the creation of a new report by assigning it a name. Subsequently, I will commence the process of selecting display fields. The initial step involves choosing the employee's name as the first display field. Following that, I will opt for the performance tracker display field group and proceed to select specific fields for display, namely reviews, performance log, comments, and the performance level. Moving on, I will choose the performance appraisal review summary and include relevant fields such as from date to date, evaluator, and competency score. Lastly, I will focus on goal-related fields, specifically goal name, status, and completion. With all the necessary display fields selected, I can proceed to save and generate the report. The result is a consolidated report that presents comprehensive performance-related information for each employee, encompassing appraisal scores, goals, and performance tracker logs side by side. Yeah, so that was just, a, just one of many hundreds of possibilities of reports that you can generate. <clears throat> Another major focus area for last year was um, uh, goal weights. Um, there was a bit of confusion with customers because uh, although we had the goal functionality, the goal functionality, goal management, and the performance appraisers uh, were quite distinct. So the 
uh, had to work on these two areas separately. But at the end of the day, when you created appraisers, we included, we provided the users the ability to include goals inside appraisers. So one of the uh, practical scenarios was that <clears throat> typically goals were um, added uh, to employees at the beginning of the year and uh, appraisers were done at the end of the year. So usually um, organizations don't really think about the appraisal cycle at the beginning. So what happened was they would just uh, go ahead with their assigning and management of the goals, but towards the end of the year, create the appraisals and run the appraisals uh, along with competencies and goals and other questions, uh, rate these. <clears throat> so one issue was that when creating goals, it was not possible to set weights uh, and define the relative um, impact of these weights in an individual's appraisal at the end of the year. So this led to some confusion uh, across the ranks. So we spent quite a lot of time and effort last year to rectify this and to align the goal and um, appraisal behaviors. Now it is possible to add, go add a goal weight when you are goal setting a goal as well as later, and you can modify the goal. You can look at the goals that will be included uh, in an appraisal and adjust their relative weights, tweak them, and see how much of an impact it would have on the final um, section weight in, in the appraisal. In addition to that, now it is possible to view uh, the weightage that is carried by each of the goals on the appraisal itself so that reviewers like supervisors or managers, before they review a particular goal, before they rate it, they know how much of an impact this goal will have on the employee's final appraisal score. So that it's, it's very transparent. Employee knows uh, how much of a weight the goal carries and the reviewers also know. So there's no room for any disputes. Let's have a quick look. I begin by adding a goal. When adding a goal, a new option allows me to set the relative weight of the goal on a scale from one to 10. If it's a goal that should be assigned the highest weight, it is given a weight of 10. Since it's an important goal, I assign it a weight of eight. I then enter the remaining goal details, assign it to Rowan and save. Reviewing the goal list, I can see that Rowan now has two goals and there's a new column displaying the weight of each goal. I can adjust the goal weight by clicking on the weight. The system then displays the goals for Rowan and their weights, along with the percentage weights each goal will contribute to Rowan's appraisal. I can modify each weight and observe how it would impact the percentage weights in Rowan's appraisal. After adjusting the weights, I save the changes. Next, I create a performance appraisal for Rowan. The two goals appear with their set weights. In the new view of the performance appraisal, I can now see the weight of each individual goal. This feature enhances the review process, allowing me to assess the potential impact of each goal on Rowan's appraisal before assigning a rating. So I be okay. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, the next feature is also related to this area. Uh, as I mentioned before, the, typically the goal setting is done at the beginning of the year and the appraisal at the end of the year. And something that happens in most organizations is that some of these goals, although they were supposed to use a system, uh, they set the goal verbally with the intention of adding the goal later. Some of them only realize this, that they, they have forgotten to add to the system when it comes to the final appraisal. So it's important that... Um, it's possible to add goals to existing appraisals that are already being reviewed. So this is a limitation we had in the system and last year we were able to uh, implement that so that we can cater to this, um, this kind of edge case scenario, but uh, this, is, this is how things happen in practice. I mean, people don't follow every step A to Z in practice. So we need to have some flexibility uh, to accommodate um, genuine mistakes. In addition to that, we have added a series of performance improvements to um, 
the performance module. It's a very comprehensive module catering to uh, hundreds of different possible combinations of behaviors through configuration. And naturally, the, the module becomes complicated to use. So it is our intention that uh, with, the, with the inevitable complication due to its comprehensiveness, uh, we, we don't want it to be less usable. So we added a series of usability improvements with the intention of reducing the number of clicks <clears throat> the user has to take to uh, achieve a certain uh, certain action. And we will continue to improve the usability so that uh, for small organization who needs a simple, simple process, they can achieve their scenarios with very few clicks at the same time, for large organizations uh, with very complex workflows and uh, configurations, we facilitate such features as well without overly complicating it for the uh, small companies. Um, yeah, so this is just a, I mean, just a set of highlights of the features we implemented last year. There were many other features, uh, uh, but out of that, uh, some features stand out that I, I, I don't have time today to explain. Maybe if we have another session, probably I could go into detail. So <clears throat> another major couple of major features we implemented around the leave module, that is to have leave in hours, because in the modern environment uh, with flexible schedules and um, the current, uh, uh, the modern ways of working, uh, it was no longer practical to calculate uh, leave in days. So this is one of the, major missing features we, we had over the years. So we are happy that we were able to uh, fix that gap last year. At the same time, we introduced the concept of short-term leave entitlements. <clears throat> In most organizations, they have this, um, especially when someone works uh, extra for some reason, inevitable reason, maybe uh, project deadlines. <clears throat> it's now possible <clears throat> for supervisors and managers uh, to uh, allocate extra leave, uh, time off in leave that could be expired within a um, couple of weeks. Um, <coughs> sorry. Then another feature we introduced was the auto punch out um, of missing attendance records. Um, so as you can see, these are features that um, that address real life practical scenarios of how people work in organizations and the typical problems they have. Uh, the, it, it's not the kind of happy path kind of a scenario. It's like at, in organizations, things <coughs> sometimes go wrong. We have to do things uh, that are not planned. Like if, the, if there's a project deadline, some, some employees will have to work late on days, on holidays. So, but then if they work late, they have to be given extra leave. So these kind of scenarios we are, we are trying to address. So that is why that is one of the intentions of these webinars is that uh, we, <coughs> we, we, we present these new features to you so that you can also get some value out of them. At the same time, uh, you feel free to share some of your practical scenarios that we cannot cater to. So we'd love to hear them so that uh, with your input, we can further improve our product. And as I said before, we had collected over 5,000 insights. The more insights we gather from clients, the better, and the better the product will become. <clears throat> now here's a, I have only three minutes. <clears throat> here's a sneak peek of some of the uh, highlights uh, <clears throat> that are prioritized for this year among many other features. <coughs> Sorry. So one of the major features is that the flexible work schedule. Uh, so it's not the nine to five, Monday to Friday schedule, but rather uh, being able to define <coughs> different schedules for different days, uh, even including overnight shifts, as well as the ability to just say uh, X number of hours <coughs> expected from an employee within a certain time window. So this is, this is, we are trying to align our product with more and more uh, modern practices, especially in the post-COVID world. Uh, we see that most organizations 
uh, have moved into these practices and they may never go back 100% for the previous way of working. <clears throat> then, as I mentioned before, there's a series of improvements we are working on on the recruitment module. One of the main items that will come in Q1 this year is the ability to search candidates based on answers they provide to the questions in the application form, as well as being able to define um, best match rules uh, based on the answers they provide and other criteria, criteria such that the system could automatically perform certain actions based on these answers, like uh, <clears throat> shortlisting candidates, for example, uh, if you want to automatically shortlist candidates who are having more than X number of years of experience in a certain skill, you can you'll be able to do so using the using um, the new feature, as well as even automatically reject candidates based on certain criteria. So I believe this will add a lot of value. <clears throat> also, it will be possible to track the source of the uh, candidates as well uh, to such that we can optimize the hiring process. For example, where the <clears throat> candidates are arriving at our system through LinkedIn, Facebook, Indeed, uh, or through the website, or what is the source so that we can uh, generate statistics for further um, uh, decision making, for further improvements. And as I mentioned before, the, the, the reporting ability will be extended to the recruitment module as well, so that um, clients can define their own custom reports. Um, and we're adding new filtering capabilities to uh, reports such that it's possible to generate reports based on relative to today's date, so that uh, uh, it will always return data that is relevant, for example, who are the employees who are having a um, five-year job anniversary within the next week? So such reports, <coughs> it will be possible to generate such reports <coughs> with this new capability. Um, so this is just a few, few of the items that we are working on. Uh, I think most of these will be available uh, within the Q1, Q2 timeframe. And uh, yeah, we will, <coughs> further consider the insights from clients and we will further refine the roadmap in months to come and uh, we will keep on improving the product and thanks again for joining and we look forward to your uh, feedback involvement in our journey towards uh, uh, improvement Impro I mean, it's a journey towards perfection we will never achieve perfection but we are keen to keep improving our product thank you Thank you very much, Himath, for walking us through uh, that insightful presentation. Uh, so all the Q&A session is now open. Uh, please feel free to uh, key in your questions. And also thank you so much for the ones who have, uh, you know, been very engaging and sent in those questions. Uh, our moderators have been answering those uh, directly to you. However, if you feel something has not been answered, uh, just give them some time. They'll get back to you privately via email since we've got your email addresses. Thank you. So feel free to send in your questions and Himat will take them and answer them during this session. Let's give a few minutes for them to drop in the questions, Himat. So for the clients who have joined in, thank you so much. Uh, this is your time to uh, key in your questions. Send them in now and uh, we can start taking them one at a time. Oh, thank you. Himat, we've got one question. Um, so I'll read this out. I want to get all employees who applied for leave last month via email. How do I do this? Yes, I think it's a good question. Um, 
my answer may not be 100% correct because um, I'm just uh, giving the answer of my head without actually verifying it. I believe you can't do it right now in the product because last month is relative to today and the filters we have now is our fixed filters. So if you, if you specifically want it for December, it can be generated. But when you move into February, it will still generate results for February. So results for December. But with the new filter capability that I, I, I just uh, mentioned in the last slide, uh, that uh, the, uh, the ability to define last week, sorry, last month relative to today will be available in Q1. I mean, in turn, it will be available within a week. But I think when we roll out, it will be definitely within Q1, it will get rolled out. <clears throat> and then the second part of the question, I believe, is about uh, how, how do I get it through an email? Um, there's a feature we rolled out, I think it was not last year, maybe 2022, which is called scheduled reports. So there is a menu. Um, I believe it's on the reports. Uh, I think it's a tab scheduled reports. So first you've got to create this report with the filter. Then you've got, you've got to go to scheduled reports and add this report with the scheduled frequency. So there, there would be certain options like how often you want this, like whether it's weekly, monthly, on a specific day, there would be certain options. And then you can say whether you want it in a, I think we support a couple of formats, uh, PDF, or uh, I think it's CSV. So we support a couple of report formats. So you can mention this format. And, and this year, 2024, we will support uh, Excel as well. So once you schedule it, uh, the... <clears throat> The report will automatically generate it at the scheduled time and uh, you will receive an email. And you can even uh, tell it, send it to these, these employees as well, not just to you, but email it to these, these um, employees so that you can send it, you can share it among department heads uh, or specific employees. So I think this combination of scheduled reports and the filters would, it gives uh, uh, such a powerful feature. I hope that answered your question. Thank you, Himat, uh, for the next question. Um, we have another client who is asking, hello, anything in your plans related to Power BI reports? Yes, but I'm, I'm not sure whether I can give the best answer. I think there are other others in the organization. I'm not sure whether any of them are here. Power BI is also is a major initiative we started last year. It's at a research level, and it is not. It doesn't come packaged with the product right now, but uh, for customers who request Power BI integrations, uh, we have a connector and we we do provide those integrations. Uh, <clears throat> but at the same time, from the product point of view, we we have initiated a research to figure out whether Power BI is the best uh, tool out there. And we are going to, this year, we are going to uh, complete that research in Q1 uh, to figure out what is the best tool out there. And we are going to uh, support, hopefully support more tools out there to generate uh, <coughs> extensive reporting. But Power BI, yes, I think you can contact our um, team and they will guide you to the right person uh, to provide the Power BI reports. Thanks, Hima. Uh, Francisco, thank you for that question. Uh, I will make sure that we connect you to the, the rightful person to get more information on Power BI. Over the next question, Hima, um, are we able to set up the widget for accessing the org chart or do individuals have to do it, uh, do this themselves? I'm not sure whether I got the... Uh, okay, I'll repeat. Are we able to set up the widget for accessing the org chart or do individuals have to do this themselves? Okay, so we have org chart. At the same time, we have... I'm not sure whether it's, it, it refers to the widgets in the dashboard. So right now, we don't support the org chart in the dashboard. So it doesn't come within a widget right now. But... Um, through the menus, you can access the uh, org chart based on your accessibility, I believe. 
we will be able to see the employees. So I, I'm not sure whether it's something uh, individual employees can benefit from because they have limited accessibility, but uh, <coughs> managers and heads of departments should be able to <coughs> sort of get some value out of it. Uh, but if, if it was about uh, uh, seeing the org chart within the uh, main dashboard or the employee dashboard, no, we don't have that ability right now in a widget. I hope that answers the question. However, if you need further clarification, feel free to reach out uh, and we will be able to get you more information. Uh, next question, Himat. Um, can I change the employee profile page centrally? Example, so everyone can have a quick access to org chart sickness, or does each person pick their own layout? Okay, I could repeat. Can I yeah, change? Yeah. I got the question. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> I need to double check, but I, I believe um, if I remember right, yes. Um, um, because there's a central configuration as well as an individual configuration. So um, if, if, if I remember right, um, <clears throat> the admins can central set the configuration which the individuals can overwrite. So, it, so the admin can make sure that you can, you can move the widgets around so that most frequently used ones are at the top and you can even, I think, remove unused ones as well. And uh, if an individual makes a change, then the system will consider the individual change uh, as a precedence and show it according to uh, what the employee changed. So uh, better, better, better check that because there's this uh, settings icon on the right. You can click on that and do the modification. You can enable, disable these widgets as well as, uh, yeah, uh, there are certain settings related to the widget that you can change so that even, even the information display, certain widgets have certain date range. You'd be able to modify some of these date ranges and see uh, different kinds of information. So you can play around with it uh, and see uh, what it provides. Thank you, Himat. So due to uh, time constraint, uh, we'll just talk at that. The other questions we will be uh, replying individually. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. And we really appreciate your engagement throughout this webinar. Uh, remember, this journey doesn't end here. So stay connected. Uh, until then, uh, take care. Thank you, Himat. And thank you all for joining. Thank you all.